it's such a valid point because the world's changing all the time. So our next speaker is Sam. Better do some techie stuff. And Sam's a coder extraordinaire. That's all I know about coding. <laughs> Basically, despite the smart ass title, it is actually about the kind of Internet of Things, which is this new um, kind of way of thinking about lots of kind of inanimate objects coming together and changing and actually having sensors built into them that can communicate with each other um, and the wider world. So that's me, Sam Mason, developer and designer. I'm also a teacher at a uh, code school in uh, Clerkenwell called Sphere. So we help people build apps, iOS, web apps, and all those other things. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, Sam J. Mason, as well. Um, so kind of what I want to talk about is very much introduction to these things. Um, so this is the kind of broad layer of the land we have at the moment. Uh, we have certain devices that connect to each other into the wider world. And yet we have our homes that we spend the vast majority of our time in with all these devices in there that perform individual functions, but that's about it. They have no concept whether they are sharing the same space with each other or they're sharing even the same functions. And this is what we want. We want to take all those inanimate objects, give them sensors, give them connectivity, so that they can all talk to each other eventually and actually communicate with each other and ourselves and the wider world around them. So a couple of examples that I will show you when the slide changes, as my comments are a little bit off, um, is this one. Your alarm picks up a traffic alert from the internet saying that your journey to work is going to take 40 minutes longer, so it automatically sets your alarm clock 40 minutes earlier. That then has a knock-on effect to your espresso machine to say, I will start brewing coffee 40 minutes earlier as well, because you're waking up at that time. Um, another example is your phone has hundreds of sensors packed into it, whether you know it or not. Um, and when you get close to your home or your home location, you can trigger lights to turn on, you can trigger the front door to unlock, you can trigger the security alarm to become disabled. And these things are out there at the moment. You can get hands on all of these and get them to work. But where do you get them from? Well, the first thing is you can buy them. You can go out to a shop today and buy all these things that do all these different things. But it's quite expensive, there's quite a premium on them. Um, and obviously you're not going to go out and rip everything that's not connected out and suddenly go and buy all these other ones unless you've got a lot of money. So another way of doing it, which is cheaper and what I prefer to do because it's a bit more hacky, is take dumb objects and make them smart. So you can buy really, really small, tiny sensors that have got crazy long battery life and attach them to these objects and kind of make them the internet of things dynamically. You can stick them on it when one of these sensors vibrates for more than five seconds, you can send a signal saying that that's the washing machine turning on. And this is what they look like, um, obviously not to scale. Um, they're about two inches tall, about three millimeters thick. They can pack temperature sensors, movement sensors, humidity sensors, all these other sensors. And they cost between £10 and £90 for 10. And you can stick them to anything and connect them to the wider world. Or, if you want to do it kind of completely, go down to the kind of groundwork and build up, you can do it all yourself. So you can build a kind of um, the printed circuit boards with all these sensors on them, get some breadboards out, start soldering bits to them. But obviously, you need to know a little bit about mechanical engineering and electrical engineering to do that. But the boards are out there and they're actually pretty cheap. Uh, some of the projects that are really pushing this forward are Arduino, Tesla, and Spark. Um, Spark's probably the newcomer, and that's a great one because that is automatically connected to the quote-unquote cloud, um, and it has it's built for the Internet of Things off the kind of bit, and you just chuck sensors on, add things to it, add some electrical circuits to it. Um, so what makes a smart device? Well, you basically need these three things and sensors as well. Um, the first one's an address, something you can connect and contact these things on. It's not much help if you're just kind of flinging out instructions to nowhere. Connectivity and the language that you can speak to these things um, in. And this is kind of much to do with anything on whether it has sensors or connected or not. So the first thing is an IP address. Everything has an IP address. Your phone in your pocket has an IP address. Your probably your home, um, anything that connects to the internet has an IP address. It's a string of numbers that says this is an individual item, it's like your phone number, it's unique to that device, and you need some way to ping it to it. 
Another thing is connectivity. Basic ones like Wi-Fi and 3G to connect it to the wider world, and Bluetooth Low Energy, which is what Apple's really pioneering at the moment with um, the watch that was released yesterday, um, and also this ID Beacon technology, which is being installed in um, supermarkets and hospitals to kind of track passive uh, movements. And a language, this is what we're calling technology or programming in API. Um, and it's basically the language that you create or it comes with this object. So it's a way that you can send instructions to this object to say, I want this certain object to do a certain thing. Um, it's basically like being a translator and you are kind of able to talk to this object. And here's a few examples, actual real life examples. Um, the first one is how you can turn, or in my house, how you can turn lights on using that command in the terminal or for a website. Uh, and the other two are talking to a thermostat that's built into the house as well, um, that you can check current temperature or change the temperature. And so what really happens with the Internet of Things is it can be broken down into two very simple ideas, is you have triggers and you have actions, and everything can trigger an action on something else. It's up to you to kind of come up with that glue code. Um, now the glue code um, is, for developers, a pain in the ass. Um, glue code is one of those things that is, to every developer, is basically a nightmare because you are having to become the translator for two completely separate languages um, and to kind of connect them together somehow. But there is a great platform out there already that involves no coding at all and allows you to connect loads of disparate devices together. Um, it's called IFT, um, and it's pronounced if this then that. And it's basically a website, you log in, you connect up loads of different influence that you have in your house or you connect up all these things that you want. And you basically say, I want this to perform an action on this or if this, then this happens over here. Um, and it's really, really easy. So that's it for my talk. Uh, no talk on the internet would be remiss without a cat picture, so there you go. Um, and yeah, thanks for listening. If you've got any questions, please feel free to come up to me after and have a chat. But thanks very much for listening. Um,